Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service in our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to the Is It Legal feature on Contemporary Retirement. Is It Legal focuses on the legal issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Firm with offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning, Mike. Tom, you know, one of the topics we like to talk about once a year, and we do a fairly extensive one, is on Medicaid traps. You know, the first mm -hmm. trap that we deal with is the perception of families that you have to be dead broke before you can qualify for any benefits for the nursing home. Yeah, that's the widely understood uh, perception out there. And again, Medicaid is designed to pay for people's nursing home care and, and a lot of other things. But the rumors are what trip people up, and then it forces them or they, it motivates them to do some things that create bigger problems for themselves. And particularly as we work with families, you know, we just cannot seem to get people to understand this, but the law is designed to protect healthy spouses. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's designed to make sure they have a place to live and money and income. And so uh, every couple's different, and I think that's part of the problem because the rules don't apply to everybody the same. So you have a married couple come in, and, and typically it's the husband, because women pick older guys, and we break down soon. <laughs> you know? And she says, well, I can only have $2,500. She's wrong. He can only have 2500 Yet there's this urban myth that a married couple cannot have more than $2,500 and be able to qualify for the state to assist them in their nursing home bill. Well, that's an excellent point, because the rules are, are much more expansive, and people are amazed at the protections that are in place and, and what assets count and don't count and just the whole litany of different rules that are very specific. And then of course the, the biggest single urban myth of all is you can't make transfers after someone's in the nursing home. Yeah, that's one that trips people up all the time and they, they just kind of give up. Oh, that's it, we're, you know, mom or dad's in the nursing home, we gotta stop. Well, that's when you start doing things. And the irony of it is, is that that perception is so pervasive and it is so perpetuated mm -hmm. by government agencies, right. discharge planners, nursing home types, that whenever we have a client in the office and we start going through this, they just start shaking their heads because it is completely contrary to everything that they've ever heard. Right, you go through it and then, you know, sometimes I'll reach the end of the discussion and they'll say, okay, when do they take my house? You know, and that type <laughs> of thing. It's just not the reality. And so with married couples, you know, we, we deal with this all the time. The law is designed to protect the healthy spouse but one of the great challenges you have is as soon as you have your spouse potentially headed to a nursing home, you need to seek quality counsel immediately. Because once you wrote that check to the nursing home, I can't get it back. I can stop <laughs> it from having to be paid, but I can't get it back. Absolutely. And, and normally after a nursing home admission, you still have some time where a Medicare might be paying the bill and whatnot, and you can figure out what the rules are, how they affect you, and what strategies you can put in place to protect yourself. But once again, you know, people just go, well, I can't afford to go see a high quality elder law attorney because I'm paying a nursing home bill. Exactly. And they're paying ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars out. And the reality is we can make that stop and we can get that under control and get the bill paid. And so one of the great concerns here is as we look at Medicaid, it is a primary funding source for nursing homes. Across the country, more than fifty percent of the beds are nursing home beds, and people look and say, well, I don't want my loved one in the Medicaid ward. Well, there are no Medicaid wards. Federal law absolutely prohibits it. Right. We walk into nursing homes all the time, and we might visit with a client who's private pay for the time being, and the next room over, the person's in, the, in, the, in a bed paid by Medicaid. You can't tell the difference. 
And so the reality of it is, is that most people, particularly when we're dealing with husband-wife situations, they want the healthy spouse to be secure. Mm -hmm. I find many times that the, pers the spouse in the nursing home is just as worried about not consuming resources to impoverish the healthy spouse as they are about their own health, wondering if they're going to be able to get out of there. That's a good point, because you'll often hear them say, what's this costing me? What's this cost? And we can explain, hey, it's being taken care of. Don't worry, your spouse is fine. You're going to get good care. One of the challenges that we have is the internet, and boy, mm -hmm. it's just a huge battle for us because first right. of all, you know, all 50 states do Medicaid differently, mm -hmm. the territories do it differently, right. and so the reality is there's nothing that you can read on the internet that has universal application. Oh, absolutely, and I get that pretty frequently from a, a child or a spouse telling me, but I read on the internet, and I said, well, you know, who wrote it, when did they write it, and, you know, did, you know why is it relevant here? And so what we find here is is that you know there's differing rules in every state. It's why you don't practice in Maryland. I don't practice in Pennsylvania, because they do it differently, and and their their approaches are different. They each have advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that our firms have done for over 20 years now is to point out to a client that you might be better off being in Pennsylvania in this case, or you might be better off being in Maryland. It's going to depend on the facts. There's no one size fits all. Exactly, and, and these these cases are very fact specific. So that's why you can't just take advice from your neighbor or coworker because it's very specific to your circumstances. And one of the challenges is we practice routinely in six counties in Maryland. They right. all do it differently, and I can guarantee you that they don't read the internet on how they how they <laughs> do it. And right. so the reality is, is I have people every day tell me, "Well, I I did this research. I know the answer." I say, oh, "I'm sorry, but that's not the answer that's going to be applied." Here. Exactly. It just isn't widely disseminated, and the state keeps these things pretty close to the to the children. So, you, know, you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> Tom, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. You're welcome. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to Special Guest Feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. My guest today is Bernadette Wagner, program Pro Primetime for Women. Welcome to the show, Bernadette. Thank you for having me. I know you're on several weeks ago, but kind of give us a recap again of what Primetime for Women is all about. Sure. Primetime for Women is a uh, program that's committed to celebrating, educating, connecting, empowering women from diverse backgrounds as they explore new possibilities during the second half of life. And the whole idea is that we're going to turn negative stereotypes about aging upside down. Uh, you're not over the hill, you're at the prime time of your life is, and they have a chance to explore new possibilities and discover new interests. So let's take all this education, lifetime experience and apply it to positive Sure, and you know, it's for many women, uh, the second half of life is the first time that there's an element of freedom. Their children are gone, they're maybe having the opportunity to um, figure out what they want to do in, uh, in their spare time, and it's, it's an exciting time of life. All right, so women, where are your meetings? So, well, we're going to host a monthly TV show. It will be taped as live before a live audience. It will be held uh, in partnership with the Women's Club of Hagerstown, which is located at 31 South Prospect Street. And it'll be on the second Saturday of each month. Uh, the doors will open at 10. Uh, we'll have some pre-show activities. And then the t taping of the show will be from 11 to 12. All right, and so you really want to you know, provide some programming, some interesting uh, 
topics being discussed, and so we have one coming up. So I'll ask Director Gregg to pull up some pictures here. And so tell us a little bit about this project. So our, uh, our first, um, one of our first uh, prime speakers is going to be Stacy Persall. She is an American veteran, uh, an Air Force veteran who was a combat photographer. She herself was injured during uh, the Iraq War. And um, during her recovery at the VA hospital, she was inspired by many veterans. And she decided to uh, facilitate her healing by recognizing and honoring other veterans. And she did this through this project that she calls the Veterans Portrait Project. All right, so what looks like we have one here. Yeah, and uh, Stacy uh, takes the time to uh, get to know and honor each veteran, uh, and they get to help uh, facilitate how they want the picture to be shaped. And I think it's really great because one of what Stacy did this past November was she had a huge exhibit down at Arlington National Cemetery at the U.S. Women's Memorial, and she highlighted many of the women veterans. All right, and so I assume this is part of advocating for that program that she ran there. Yes, and we're really excited to have her coming to Prime Time for Women. Uh, she's been on both Oprah Winfrey and PBS NewsHour, and just that she's willing to come and be a part of our uh, little project is so exciting to us. She says she wants to be uh, facilitate and be part of our show because she believes in healing um, other women through interaction and support and uplifting women. And we'd be remiss to not mention that she's essentially, you know, sh coming just to help your program. She's not making any compensation for no, it. No, right? she, she's just really uh, been incredibly generous and gracious because she believes that women can heal women through interaction and supportive activities. Now, I know you're a ramp-up organization here, so how would people find out more information, though, about the programming that you're having? Sure, we're going, we have a website that's under construction but should be up and running soon. It's primetimeforwomen.com. Uh, can also find out a lot about Prime Time for Women on our Facebook page. So go to Facebook page, um, type in Prime Time for Women, it'll pop up and you can get tickets to the show, which are only $10. We're trying to make it very accessible so that uh, everybody can come to the show. And I know that you intend not to make a profit on it, but it's part of your to make uh, contributions to the community as well. Sure, so one of the things we're really excited about is we're encouraging women to come together because there's uh, research so that social interaction is uh, health protective and so to encourage women to come together the group of women that uh, the largest group of women c that come together will get to select the nonprofit that receives a portion of the proceeds from the ticket sales. All right Bernie that once again when and where? Again the first, first show is going to be February 9th at the Women's Club in Hagerstown which is located at 31 South Prospect Street and uh, the festivities start at 10 and the taping of the show begins at 11. And then Facebook is how you can find how to get the tickets. Right. So. And if anybody has questions, they can also call 240-313-5985. And they will get Bernadette. They will get me. <laughs> As always, Bernadette, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. Thank you so much for having me. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving so you and your loved one can embrace life again. Dad, Dad, there's the big one. There's the big one. Just wait, just wait. There's the monster. Just, just one more bid on hurlyauctions.com. I got it, I got it, I got it. If you haven't visited hurlyauctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at hurleyauctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or mammogram. Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. 
With me today is Bridget Keith, Community Relations Director, Tranquility of Fredericktown. Welcome to the show, Bridget. Thanks for having me, Mike. You know, Bridget, we, we talk about assisted living, and most people need to understand the government is determined to grow the assisted living environment because it's the only way they can cut the nursing home census. Right, and in that respect, they keep allowing us to give a higher and higher level of care. As we talk to people all the time, they say, well, assisted living can't do this, can't do that, and they don't understand the government in its determination to get out of the nursing home business continuously expands the service model that assisted living is permitted to do. It's true, and the consumer needs to ask when they visit assisted livings what licensing level they are, because there are some that still can't do various things, but then there are some that can like give a certain amount of wound care, that kind of thing? Well, you know, I was dealing with a discharge planner at the hospital recently mm -hmm. and the person said, well, you can't go to assisted living because you need physical or occupational therapy. Right. I still don't think people understand how the models change. For instance, Tranquility has physical, occupational, and speech therapy on site. And unlike what it would have been several years ago, Medicare said we want people out of nursing homes and we will allow those therapies to be delivered in assisted living and covered by insurance. Yes, in fact, Medicare Part A covers it up to 100%. And we did a study recently, most of our residents receive some sort of therapy eight months out of the year that's covered. And the second thing we hear is, as you were mentioning, wound care, is that, you know, traditionally, if there was any sort of wound care involved, it just simply meant they had to go to a nursing home. Right. And now there are different stages of wounds, but we can give the wound care or under different licensing, like if someone comes in under hospice, um, an outside agency can come in. And that's one of the things that people don't understand is, is that you know hospice many years ago could only be done in the home. It was not allowed in hospitals, was not allowed in nursing homes, did not come to assisted living, but that model has been changed completely as well. Right, and ho hospice used to be turn on the morphine and the show was over. And now it's more about palliative care, comfort care, and it's very elastic. People graduate from hospice all the time and people think you automatically have to say my loved one is going to die or else I can't do that. Obviously they're going to die, but right. they must be dying in a very near-term window, which is just simply not the case anymore. No, now you can have a chronic condition, you can not you can be not eating well, weight loss, and you would qualify for hospice. And that oftentimes allows an expanded service model within your facility or in the home as well for people who would otherwise have to be institutionalized. Right. It's all about a partnership, um, the new models of care. And then, of course, you know, people automatically have this assumption, I have to give up every aspect of my quality of life if I agree to go to assisted living. So, for instance, do they have to give their car up? No, they do not. We can park it right out front for them. And in the wintertime? We clear the snow off. We start it, all of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, then oftentimes, well, I'm gonna have to eat some sort of institutionalized meals. No, the food is actually delicious and um, there's always choices and alternates available. All right, and then, well, you know, I, uh, I like to have a cocktail. You may have your cocktail. You may have two or three, <laughs> as long <laughs> as the doctor says it's okay. <laughs> And then I know that uh, you know, a few of our people who don't want to give up their cigarettes, you don't make it easy for them, but they can, in fact, do that as well. Right. We have a designated smoking spot outside, and you can have a pet as well. And so it's not designed to restrict your quality of life. It's designed to augment your life within the context of what your current health situation is. Right. And to really not let your illnesses or conditions bring you down, we help build people up. And then, of course, oftentimes people say, well, I can't do there because I need medication management. Right. And we um, have licensed medication techs who are supervised by an RN, and 24-7, that's what they do. And so the reality is, is it's not designed to deprive you of quality of life. It's designed to let you have the maximum quality of life that you can have within the context of your current life circumstance. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so we caution people every day, even if you were told three years ago or five years ago that a family member that you were working with could not be in assisted living, you can never rely on that statement today. Right. Even a year ago, things have changed so much. So they definitely need to be educated and to really look around. And of course, the last urban myth of all, that you take their house. 
Right. We touch no assets. We just rent month to month, and the only thing that we ask is financial proof that they can actually pay the bill monthly. But you don't take their house? We do not take their houses. So how can they get a hold of you? They can pop in, at, and we're on Jefferson Pike next to the Adventist School, but not the Sunday School, <laughs> and they can call 301-668-6030. Bridget, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. Thanks for having me, Mike. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. The Community Foundation, through its scholarship programs and through its strategic grants, has been a positive influence for change. Last year, change in Frederick County was influenced thanks to nearly 1,800 caring donors. Everyone can help. Your influence is key. Help us proactively focus on where we need to be investing our energy in the future. Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and Itell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. Making Sense focuses on various financial issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Doug Fiery from Douglas Fiery Funeral Homes. Welcome to the show, Doug. Thanks, Mike. Doug, you know, we talk about a lot of things in terms of getting prepared, and, and unfortunately many families, and it seems to be becoming even a growing preponderance of them, are not prepared for end-of-life issues. Right. You know, we've talked a lot of times about just being prepared with information uh, that you need to have to be able to take care of things, but I think sometimes we also be, have to be realistic and say, are we pre prepared financially to be able to handle, the, you know, what comes up in a time like this? You know, and oftentimes it's really where pre-planning becomes really important. You know, there's first of all, many people are looking at the cost of a funeral and saying, uh, that's a big number, but oftentimes if the family begins to address that issue 10 years before the likely time that a person's going to pass, it can be economically pretty easy to handle. It can, and there's lots of options that we can show them in different uh, styles of funerals, different ways of prepaying those funerals. Uh, so we'd love to sit down and you know kind of chat with them and just show them their options so they can have a, an educated plan in place. And oftentimes people don't realize is that, you know, they, they have assets, you know, it may be a retirement asset, it may be a home and so forth, uh, but your role is to help the family get through this process with the least amount of disruption in a very disruptive process. Absolutely. You know, we just, we see that often when families come in and they're not really prepared for this and it really, really puts a big burden on families. They're stressed about doing what they want to do and a lot of times what they like to do, they can't afford to do. And that just creates a, a you know, just a, a very kind of a sad feeling that they can't accomplish what they want to do. And then unfortunately, many times there's this perception, well, I bought the burial plot, therefore I have the funeral taken care right. of. Right, that is so true, you know. And a lot of times parents sometimes inadvertently will, will tell their kids, oh, everything's taken care of, I got it all done. But in all reality, all they've done maybe is purchase the cemetery lots. And, and, and so the kids are thinking, oh, everything's taken care of, but it isn't. So it's kind of, if you're a, a child of a parent, it might be in your best interest to kind of check into that a little bit and dig a little deeper and make sure things are what they are. And so there's a lot of different variables in terms of how prepared you are. Buying the lot is one thing, perhaps buying the, you know, the vault is something mm -hmm. else, the casket is yet something right. else, and having the service is yet something else. Right. And that's one of the things we love to do is really sit down with people, you know, and again, it's no, it's no commitment on their part, but let's, let's sit down and have that conversation and see where they are, give them some direction, give them some options, and see, maybe make a plan to help them not get into this situation 10 years down the road. And then oftentimes there's a perception that I'm going to be cremated, therefore there's nothing that needs to be done. Right, and it's the farthest thing from the truth because surprisingly, I think with cremation, there's more choices, more decisions to make because there's so many more options available. So again, a good opportunity to educate, learn, make some decisions and understand where, where the costs kind of fall into that and everything. And it just, again, how many times have we talked about just being prepared is just key. Or you get this situation, that, well, I'm a veteran, so therefore I don't have to pay any attention to right. this. A lot of people think that, you know, they were a veteran, they're World War II veteran, that everything's paid for. 
you know, and that's not true. There are some great benefits that are offered uh, federally and through the state, through uh, cemeteries and things of that nature. But again, it doesn't carry the weight of what has to be done. So, so it means there may be a location, there might be some opportunity for some military honors, but it doesn't address the rest of the issues. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. And that, again, it's just part of that education thing that we'd love to sit down and chat with you, so we can get that, you know, get, understand what all is available, what is there, what you can do. And then, of course, you know, some of the military cemeteries are, you know, a little bit more accessible than others. You know, Arlington, for instance, it's going to be quite a while before the time, from the time of the service until the time the person is actually interred. Right, even if you're eligible, you know, from that standpoint. If you want to be cremated, it's not really an issue at Arlington, but if you want to have a traditional burial, uh, you know, the, the requirements to be buried there are pretty high and stringent in that sense. But you do have, like, uh, the Maryland Veterans Cemetery uh, that are available. The closest one for us is Rocky Epp, which is a wonderful cemetery and offers a, a lot of savings when it comes to those sort of things. So that's something that people may want to look into. And then, of course, as we talk to families all the time, they have to address the issue that, you know, you have snowbirds or you actually have people who have switched their residence to Florida, but in fact, they have no long-term connection there. Right. And that, and I think people think that's difficult, you know, oh my gracious, my parents are in Florida, how do I get them home? And again, those are things that we do all the time, it's not, it's not an issue, but, you know, again, we're there to help uh, and to educate, so, uh, you know, come talk to us, we'd love to help you get that burden off your mind. Any cost to come talk to you? Absolutely not. Love just to sit down and educate. That, it makes everybody better, makes us have more knowledge to, to help them, and so it's, it's a great scenario. Doug, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on thanks, the program. Mike. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there. I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just this simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I've recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.